Hello and welcome to the channel Ruckasaurus Rex where we review and discuss all things dinosaur and other prehistoric animals. How have you all been? You see what we got going on in front of you. Another offering from Beasts of the Mesozoic, the Ceratopsian series. Of course, this is courtesy of the Late to the Party campaign that we are doing as we're playing catch up with Beasts of the Mesozoic, the Ceratopsian series. Uh, I am indeed late to the party, as anybody that's been following me knows full well. And uh, you also know that uh, I'm um, just uh, trekking right along in my attempt to catch up. You guys can definitely uh, attest to that alongside with me. What we have before us, we are now looking at one of the bigger boys. We're talking about Pentaceratops Sternbergi. And... Uh, Pentaceratops is a very um, uh, a pretty pretty well known ceratopsian. Uh, its major claim to fame is uh, its skull, and of course, you'll probably say, "Well, all of the ceratopsians claims the fame are the skull," and that would be true. But the difference between other ceratopsians and this particular animal is that it holds the title of the uh, largest ceratopsian skull as well as the longest uh, skull for any land uh, living animal, land living uh, vertebrate animal at 10 feet long. That's just the skull. And to uh, give you an idea of uh, how significant that is, Pentaceratops grew to about 20 feet long. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that its skull was half its length. Um, that's because you know, a good portion of that skull was taken up by the frill. So, uh, and the frill, as you know, doesn't extend uh, vertically. It kind of extends somewhat horizontally. So that takes away from some of that length. Needless to say, it's got a 10 foot long skull and the rest of him altogether comes out to about 20 feet. Anyway, getting back to this actual, uh, to this action figure, you could see the figure in the uh, packaging within the window. You see that beautiful artwork and uh, all of the logos and all of that. And as always, you know what you got there on the side there, the logo and the Triceratops avatar. To the back we go and uh, part of that, uh, the band there, you see it reads uh, number 23, Pentaceratops Sternbergi. Pentaceratops, Penta, five, stands for five horned face. And uh, you see a picture of the collectible card, which is the same artwork that we saw on the front. And then, of course, on the reverse of the card, we'll have the uh, some information that we have uh, down below, which is length, around six meters or 20 feet long, as I stated, location, Kirtland Formation, New Mexico, USA, time period, late Cretaceous, 75.8 million years ago. Five horned face is in reference to Pentaceratops, two long epigical bones, plus to the uh, the two brow horns and nasal horn. What they're talking about are the, uh, the he's got two, or it has two uh, horns that come out, we'll call it around the cheek area. So that's what they're talking about. Uh, Pentaceratops is known for having the longest frill of any ceratopsian and, and has the largest skull of any land vertebrate ever at over 10 feet. And that's just crazy. And then, of course, the top there, we've got the 20 points of articulation, realistic movement and detail, profile card included, number 23. So we know that uh, most of them have 20 points. Some of them say 19. The ones that say 19, you can safely assume that means that the tongue is not articulated. And that's where that one missing uh, point comes from. Removing the band so you can see the checklist. This is wave three. And... Uh, you can probably, uh, if you've been following me, you know that uh, uh, I've got most of these guys. Uh, we've got Xenoceratops, Albertoceratops, Sinoceratops, Utahceratops, Triceratops, and Taurosaurus. And we've reviewed all with the uh, exclusion of Triceratops, and we're doing Pentaceratops now. So, well on our way to completing Wave 3, that's for sure. So... One final look at our Pentaceratops in packaging, and uh, it's time to unleash this beast, as is typical with B 
Beast of the Mesozoic action figures. A backdrop is included, and uh, they're usually quite nice, and this is no exception. What we have here is a, uh, we've got a lake with a uh, picture of um, forest in the background, as well as the base of a mountain. Very, very nice. And here's that aforementioned collectible card with that uh, beautiful artwork of the Pentaceratops. And on the reverse, we'll have that info that I read off. Uh, the back of this packet is uh, the instructions on how to apply the tail, which comes detached in packaging. And uh, you either use uh, hot water or a uh, hair dryer. Here we have our Pentaceratops. And uh, this is another big boy. Uh, you can see I... Uh, barely have the uh, all four feet on the rotating base but they're there so we're able to get the 360 of uh, the figure and it's a very beautifully painted figure it's uh as always with the creative b studios action figures beast of mesozoic uh ceratopsian series are based on existing reptiles and amphibians and in this case the pentaceratops main uh color base is off of the uh, amazonian horn frog and of course, as always, Creative Beast Studios will uh, take artistic license and, uh, you know, customize the, uh, the figure as it were. Anyway, it's looking great and uh, we're going to get the uh, Pentaceratops off of the base and get a closer look at it. We now have our Pentaceratops off of the base and uh, the uh, first thing we'll go over is the size of the, uh, of the action figure. I had already reported that Pentaceratops is uh, estimated to be about 20 feet long. I had already mentioned about the uh, about the uh, the skull, how long that was in real life, 10 over 10 feet long, at least 10 feet long, which is uh, of course the largest Ceratopsian skull, as well as the largest skull for any land vertebrate animal. Uh, pretty pretty big the uh, action figure itself from the beak to the uh, tip of the tail is uh, 16 inches we'll go over that don't I, I said it first uh, only just to get out the way because I also want to take a measurement of the uh, skull on this particular action figure so yes that is 16 inches and the skull alone going to the very top of that uh, brow uh, spike is a little more than seven inches so that's just crazy right there um, at that 16 inch estimation it's uh, comes out to uh, be about uh, 24 feet long this would represent a 24 foot long animal so it's a bit oversized for uh, the 118th scale but um, still looks nice of course and that does work so um, we do have that, so let's uh, take a closer look at that aforementioned skull. So here we have our Pentaceratops up close and personal, and uh, once again, it's got a very huge, huge, huge skull. The frill is what is what does it. The frill is the longest frill of all the Ceratopsians, and uh, that's what lends to that uh, 10 foot plus length on the uh, actual animals themselves. Uh, as you can see also it has the uh, the brow horns and it's got the nasal horn and those uh, cheek horns that uh, we had mentioned in the opener is what makes it the penta gives it its penta in the ceratops so you've got one you know you got uh, the cheek horn so you see one on either side there and uh, that's where it gets its uh, name from of course it also has uh, nice uh, spike ornamentation going along the frill so uh, very very nice and just looking at the frill and that design that's just crazy right there very very nice the eye is uh, painted yellow with a black pupil and surrounded by uh, a black uh, paint you've got the uh, that striping which is like a uh, a, a, a darker type of orange and it also has the dry brushing over it so it makes the uh, scalation pop you've got uh, the horns got a nice like a uh, 
a grayish brown color for the horns, both the nasal and the brow horns, as well as the stubs going down in the, the beak itself, as well as the, uh, the cheek horns and uh, the spikes that go along the frill. Very nice there. Looking behind at that frill, you see that it's got that brown still going on in the back there, but it's basically that, uh, that orange type color till you get to the base of the neck and it's orange but you've got the black paint there for the nice striping and then looking at the uh, rest of the uh, the, the uh, figure that base is orange then you've got the, the black striping with uh, yellow uh, stripes bordering on the undersides of those uh, black or dark brown stripings as it were you've got uh, on the top they've got to move the frill out the way because it's so big and you got the osteoderms there, the black painted and right down the spine. It's got that orange. And you see you've got the uh, you've got uh, the, the paint there, right down there in the middle. When you look at the legs, still based in that orange, but you've got that same dark brown striping with the uh, under the uh, the yellow striping uh, underneath all of that going down the forelimbs. The uh, toes painted a uh, like a, a beige, if you could see that. Then moving to the back, the rear legs, it's got that so based in that uh, orange, the brown. Everything is consistent. You still have that yellow that's uh, on the underside of the striping, the brown, the dark brown striping. And then going down the legs, once again, uh, the legs, uh, the feet, the toes painted in that uh, like that beige color. Then looking at the rear, once again it stays consistent. You've got the dark brown and then of course the, the yellow striping that uh, borders the brown on the underside. You've got the striping right there and there is some of the uh, yellow bordering that. The same goes right down the lane for the tail, the bordering right there. And you get to the underside of the tail. And then in the underside of the animal itself it has the cloaca and uh, it's uh, just a lighter shade of that uh, of that orange it just got lighter there and of course it all repeats on the other side there so you've got that in terms of the uh, articulation 20 points of articulation so you know what that means we've got the articulated jaw and while we've got the jaw open see if we can see some of the paintwork on the inside there one thing you can see is the tongue, and the tongue is articulated. It's recessed back there, but you can still move that tongue around, so you have that. The head is uh, also articulated, so you can go left, right, and up and down, independent of the neck. But when you use the neck, you can go even further up and further down, and you can get the head to turn that way. You can get some rotation in that head, which is great. The body, of course, up, down, left and right. And of course you can twist it like that. Forelimb can rotate. You've got articulation at that elbow. And then you have it at that at that uh, ankle or slash the foot joint. It can rotate, it can pivot, and it can go up and down. And you can splay the uh, forelimb out like that. Hind limb, rotation, you can splay partially a little bit. You have some articulation in the uh, at the knee. And that does swivel as well. And uh, you have uh, articulation at that lower joint there, as well as the feet. It rotates and can go up and down. And then of course the tail, left, right, up, down, and you could swivel it if you chose to do so. So that's the articulation for our Pentaceratops. It bears mentioning that in between takes here, I, uh, did some research because I kind of doubted what I had stated about the size of Pentaceratops. Not about the, not about the skull. I know I had that right because uh, that's its claim to fame. That large ten foot plus skull with the frill, but the overall size itself. And I had given it a twenty foot estimate, and uh, I was right on that. But that's the low end. They um, do have species that were up to and including twenty six specimens, I should say, up to and including twenty six feet. So. That uh, 16 inches that uh, that basically calculated out to uh, 24 feet uh, as a representation of what a Pentaceratops size would be, 
uh, is uh, it's it's definitely right there in that ballpark. And to give you some context onto uh, how large a Pentaceratops was in real life compared to a six foot male, uh, or I should say about a five foot nine male, because this uh, action figure of the uh, Mandalorian, which is a three point seven five inch figure that's also listed as a 1 18th scale figure so these uh this is what a normal human being would be, would look like basically next to a pentaceratops so um that's pretty large once again it, it it amazes me when i see uh a creature that's that size up against the human being and have the knowledge that they were still bigger i'm talking to you taurosaurus triceratops it's just astounding to me. And now comparing our Penaceratops against other beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsians that we've recently reviewed, here we have the Nasutoceratops. And you can uh, definitely see the differences there. The Nasutoceratops got to uh, about uh, 15 feet long. And now we have uh, Avaceratops, the controversial Avaceratops. And finally, we've got him next to another big boy We've got the Pachyrhinosaurus, and uh, Pachy is going to uh, have company very soon as uh, my fan's choice version of the Pachyrhinosaurus is coming. And speaking of fan's choice, I'm um, debating whether or not to get the fan's choice Taurosaurus. I've got the, uh, the standard one, you know, blue colored, um, but uh, I saw... Uh, I actually saw another review of the fans' choice Packy Rhino and uh, uh, not Packy Rhino, but uh, Taurosaurus, and uh, that looked great too. So I'm going back and forth on whether or not I should double dip on Taurosaurus. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And here we have our Penaceratops utilizing the backdrop that was included with the figure as a uh, finale to this uh, review. Once again, it's pretty nice. It looks like uh, our penna is uh, wading in the water. So that's, uh, like I said, these uh, these backdrops are great. And of course, obviously, you could use them for uh, other uh, other other displays and applications if you so chose. So uh, basically, anyway, uh, in conclusion to this particular view of the Beast of the Mesozoic Pentaceratops, this is a... Uh, very impressive figure, uh, very nice. The uh, colors used of the Amazonian horn frog. Uh, it looks like uh, I would have to say it, it it works with this particular species for sure. The articulation is there. That uh, that skull is just bananas, and uh, it's it it's just great. I just I mean I I gush over every figure that I review. I know and it's probably getting sickening. But what can I say? It is what it is. Mr. Silva, David Silva, uh, he's come up with a winner of a line. And uh, I'm very glad, as late as I am to the party, I'm glad that I have joined the party. And uh, soon I'm going to be caught up, uh, or for the most part, with the Sir Topsian series. And uh, the Tyrannosaur series is about to begin. Uh, that is on its way along with that fan's choice Packy Rhinosaurus that I told you guys about. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. I can't wait. Uh, I should be getting that uh, in a few days. And uh, you know I'm going to be excited about that. And, uh, and speaking of that, Pentaceratops, and, and speaking of the uh, Tyrannosaur series, uh, the uh, Tyrannosaur that was around along with Pentaceratops was the uh, Bistiavosaur, and um, that is going to look great in displays when that figure finally comes out. That figure is supposed to come out, I want to say, March or April, and uh, I think it's supposed to come out then. It's coming out this year, barring any, uh, you know, incidents, but um, yeah, that'll be great too. So, uh, let me know down in the uh, comments below what you think about this figure, about the review, about about the channel, whatever. You know, leave that. While you're down there leaving a comment, please le uh, leave a like. 
definitely do that and then go ahead and share so other people can uh, get down with this content and uh, if you want to be notified when I upload another uh, another video please uh, hit that bell while you're down there oh and do not forget to subscribe if you have not done so already support the channel we're trying to keep it moving bring you some more content more dinos and other action figures that are a representative of prehistoric animals so that's what we're going to try to do and uh, we need you guys to help us along so uh, once again thanks for uh, watching and uh, take care guys